Hey everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of Junk Food News, this one for November 2016. First, we're going to talk a little bit about stuff that happened here at Candy Critic. First of all, we went to New York City. It's been a while since I've been there, probably about, uh, oh, it's got to be over 12 years since I've been to New York City. It was a great trip. I got to see all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, in particular, I got to see stuff that I haven't seen in a while, but I also got to see how New York has changed. That's the, that's the great thing about New York is it evolves, but it also, there's some things that just are, are mainstays that you always have to have to check out. Um, I discovered Shake Shack, which is pretty awesome. I had my first uh, taste of Chipotle. Uh, we don't have those here in Canada or in any other places where I've happened to have lived. And, um, you know, other than that, it was, it was a really good time. Great food. Uh, you know, made my regular stops to Dylan's and a few of the other cool candy places and bakeries that I love to visit. So it was a great time. Uh, you can check out, uh, go to on our, our blog. I did a post roundup of all the cool things I saw. And uh, you can go, obviously, to at Candy Critic on Twitter and see some of the posts and pictures and cool stuff that we came across. The other thing that started, started to happen in November is Christmas stuff started to pop up. Uh, it seems kind of early. Uh, it was before Thanksgiving, even, because that's sort of the traditional is American Thanksgiving is sort of the, the marker, I always say, for, uh, you know, what is acceptable for uh, Christmas stuff and snacks to start to appear. But early November, I would say the beginning of November, I was already starting to find all kinds of uh, Christmas uh, cookies and cakes uh, in the aisles at grocery stores. Uh, even ha sampled some candy cane Oreos, which actually were pretty good. Uh, although they left my candy jar smelling completely minty, which is a little bit of a disappointment. But uh, as we're recording this in December, obviously Christmas is in full gear and we're going to have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of stuff on the, the blog and everything posted about all the cool Christmas stuff that we're coming across. Uh, so let's start off with the news. First of all, uh, there was an interesting Mental Floss article that sort of explained the physics behind uh, the Oreo twist game. If you're not familiar with the Oreo twist game, the idea is two people twist an Oreo and the winner is the one that has the cream. Apparently there's some physics to make sure you always win this game, and Mental Floss uh, posted them. It was a pretty interesting article. Have you ever dreamed of being a ramen noodle? Probably not. But there's a spa in Japan that lets you live out that dream, whether you like it or not. Basically, what you do is you sit in giant bowls of soup and soak it in. So apparently being a ramen noodle is a health thing. It's a spa. It's, it's, it's said to help uh, make you feel better and, and give you energy and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to just chalk it up to another weird Japan thing. There was a great article in Mother Jones about candy cigarettes. You know, it was sort of, are they the best candy? Are they the worst candy? Was it something that... Uh, that was important in culture and got eliminated. I mean, most today we would probably all admit that candy cigarettes are very not politically correct. But, you know, when I was a kid, I had candy cigarettes. In fact, the Popeye candy, they go now call them candy sticks, which I have a whole thing of. If you read the Popeye candy sticks review on uh, Candy Critic, why I hate them. But, uh, you know, they, I grew up with these things and I thought they were kind of cool and I don't smoke. So... I mean, does, is there anybody out there who actually had candy cigarettes and candy, that, that sort of thing, who went, hmm, this seems like a good idea. I think I'm going to start smoking. I don't think so. But on the other hand, I do understand why they don't sell them anymore. Also, early in November, there was an interesting article about a place in China that decorated, it was a building that decorated itself like a cake. And according to the Chinese government, they weren't very happy about that. And they insisted that these people take it down. And I actually believe the government came in and took down all this, the decorations that made this place look like a cake. It's kind of weird, but uh, I guess some people just don't like cake. Lifehacker had an interesting article. Uh, it's actually, a, it's part of a continuing article called Will It Sous Vide, where they sous vide cook uh, sort of strange things that you wouldn't normally sous vide. Uh, in this particular uh, episode, they sous vide cookie dough to see what would happen. It's a pretty uh, fascinating result, so uh, well worth checking out. As always, if you're interested in checking out anything we're talking about, you can go to our Twitter feed, at Candy Critic, or go to www.candycritic.org and you'll find links to Facebook and our other social media where we often post all these articles. So make sure to check that out. Technology is making baking a very strange thing. Apparently, there's a new gadget out there called Chip, which is a $100 tabletop oven that cooks four cookies, but they cook them like K-cups. So there's these little kits you buy and it makes four exact cookies. Um, now I'll be honest, I, I, I've only recently started to get into baking in the last few years, like seriously, and I'll be honest, getting ingredients together is really easy and might be easier than whatever cleanup this thing involves. Baking cookies, it's, there's not much to it. I've stopped buying packaged ingredients, but apparently they're the, all the rage and people really, really want cookies fast without having to mix anything. 
According to the FDA, Nutella is not a spread. It is, in fact, a dessert. Uh, this was an, a kind of a controversial thing because Nutella wants to be labeled as a spread and believes that things like jams and everything like that are just as sweet as them and are considered spread. But the uh, FDA, according to their regulations, Nutella fits more in the category of dessert than spread. What do you think? I mean, some people call it sort of glorified icing. Other people call it, uh, you know, a great thing to put on bread. Now, this is probably old news already, but Starbucks brought back their famous red cups. I have no idea what that means at all, but apparently the Starbucks world went absolutely ballistic when they're talking about their red cups. They also went ballistic, it was a, a while before this, about green cups. Now, I don't drink uh, Starbucks, I don't really drink coffee that much, so I'm not really sure what the deal is. Maybe somebody can tell me. But, uh, oh joy of joys, the red cups are back. Now this was truly shocking news. Apparently Toblerone has changed their design, and so there's less peaks and more uh, flat bits to their bar, which basically means it's a smaller bar. And, but it's in the same size packaging, and it looks sort of the same. But if you compare the two together, it's obvious that they've reduced the amount of chocolate in a Toblerone bar. This is a horrible, horrible thing to do. And I, I hate it when companies, you know, reduce the size like this and sort of create this sort of fake idea of, well, we're not actually shrinking it, but we are. As you know, I'm also a big Disney fan. And there's two articles about Disney that were well worth mentioning. First of all, Disneyland has brought back their candy canes. I've actually never been to Disneyland, particularly I've never been during the holidays, so I have no idea what this means, but to Disney fans, it's a big, big deal when candy canes come out. They, they do hand make them from what I understand, and so it's, it's a special kind of treat, and it's a special part of the holidays for those who like to spend Disney and uh, who bring Disney and Christmas together. The other big news is in Walt Disney World in Florida, they brought back their amazing gingerbreads at all their different resorts. Uh, in particular, the Grand Floridian has a life-size gingerbread house, and it looks absolutely amazing, and it's actually made out of gingerbread. So uh, if you're at either one of those parks, uh, you're definitely going to have all kinds of cool Christmassy treats while you're there. There's a restaurant in New York City called Raw Material NYC, and they've created a bun that explodes. Uh, it doesn't actually explode like as in shrapnel and everything, because instead of big metal shards coming at you, it's going to be hot cheese. Um, I'm not sure how much better that is, because I'm sure it might scald you and hurt you, but uh, the next wave in hamburger seems to be exploding buns. Are you familiar with those uh, tea bombs, they call them? Some, some, or some, call them, some people call them tea flowers. They're basically these little balls that you put in water, and not they're, they're, they're tea, so they, they, they brew into a tea, but they also, the, the little ball opens up into a flower and sort of creates this uh, sort of beautiful thing floating in the bottom of your teapot. So if you have a glass teapot, it's kind of, kind of fun and interesting. Well, somebody thought, well, what if you don't drink tea? What if you're a hot chocolate person? Blooming marshmallows. Yep, the idea is there's this little ball you put on top of your hot chocolate, and then the heat releases it and opens up this marshmallow into a marshmallow flower. I think that's kind of fun. Um, after all, uh, hot chocolate is one of the best ways to eat marshmallows. I'm not a huge marshmallow fan. Uh, I guess I'm very particular about how I have them. Um, hot chocolate is often a way that I do enjoy it, and why not make it pretty at the same time, right? In the weird internet category of today's news, there was this crazy thing going all over the internet about a cinnamon bun that looks like sad E.T. Uh, I've seen the picture of it. It kind of looks like sad E.T. It more, it, to me, it more looked like E.T. who had gone a couple of rounds with Rocky Balboa and got punched in the face a few times. So it kind of had a resemblance of E.T., but kind of looked a little mangled and kind of creepy. So uh, if you haven't seen it yet, look it up. Uh, Cinnamon Roll Sad E.T. I'm sure if you Google that, you'll find it. And judge for yourself. Of course, uh, November is American Thanksgiving time. And we had all kinds of interesting articles about Thanksgiving. But one of the most fascinating was about this uh, person who decided, sort of as an art installation, to create a Thanksgiving dinner completely made out of candy. Now, I, I do enjoy Thanksgiving dinner, and I do enjoy candy, so maybe this would work. Uh, I would be a little bit put off if, uh, like for example, the turkey seemed to be made out of gummy, so hopefully it tasted like something other than turkey, because that would be absolutely disgusting if uh, turkey-flavored gummy. But other than that, it seemed like a fun thing to do, and maybe a fun thing to do as a dessert f after Thanksgiving or maybe for your Christmas meal to have sort of some of the dishes recreated in that you had for, for dinner in a candy form. It's actually something kind of maybe a creative idea somebody could try out. Thanks again for listening to another episode of Junk Food News, where we talked all about the news that happened in November 2016. As always, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can follow at Candy Critic, where we post news 
all the time. And this is where we source all the articles for this. So if you want to look back and actually read some of these articles in depth, it would be the perfect place to go. You can also go to candycritic.org and you'll find links to all our other social media there. Uh, a lot of our other social media is where we'll post these articles as well. Um, we're just updating our snack facts uh, section, which is our Instagram feed. Uh, we're adding something new called the Donut Project, which is coming up soon. And we're returning back with more snack facts all the time. Uh, if you want to listen to old episodes of this podcast, uh, past news, as well as our junk food on the road, junk food new, which we have a new episode coming up soon, as well as our, as our YouTube show, Chris, why would you eat that? You can go to candycritic.org slash junk food, J U N K F U D. And you can find links to all of our episodes or past episodes, as well as keep up with all the new stuff there. Um, thanks for listening and, uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Shin. Mm-hmm.